Gray, he doesn't need an introduction. I mean, this is a man of many talents. He's climbed the heights of the mountains, he's gone down the deep seas, but tonight is going to be totally different. Uh, he's going to talk about a horse that has changed his life, a horse that taught him what it meant to be helpful to people, what rewards you get when you are helpful to people. And it's his best kept secret. The horse's name is Secret to Gold. And Mark is here with his friend. Where did Craig go? Back there. Uh, some of you have met Craig before when Mark has been here presenting other programs. And so let me just turn it over to Mark, but give him a, that applause you gave him earlier. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you so very much for everyone coming out to support me this evening. 11 years of my life we're going to talk about tonight. And an amazing animal that showed me the power of giving. And I want to start uh, this evening by reading an excerpt from the beginning of a book that I have written about my journey with Secret to Gold. I am a daydreamer. I try to live life in a constant state between my realities and dreams that help me feel like anything is possible if you can dream it. I was taught growing up that when you cease to dream, you cease to live. Dreaming is the inner child in all of us. I'm sure we all can think back to when we were children. The world was huge and life was endless. Dreams were precious and we felt like we could be anything we could ever imagine when we grew up. As we age, the nightmares of real life set in and we lose that inner child in us and live in the harsh reality of life afraid to sleep, afraid to dream. Quite frankly, we wake up. We wake up every morning to the beat of an annoying alarm clock that seems to say, here we go again. We eat breakfast, kiss our significant others, leave our houses and head into our SUVs, go off to work some nine to five job, leave, living only for the weekends, holidays, and the times we can escape our mundane reality by having a cat nap and taking a vacation away from that reality. This is what I call sleepwalking. I have tried my entire life to stay asleep and will my dreams into reality. In most cases, I have failed. But in one particular case, this one, my dream became a reality. I was able to have the honor of meeting and spending time with my most beautiful dream. She was everything I ever could have imagined. The only thing in this world she loved to do was run fast. I could swear as she floated through the air, her head faced into the wind, that a smile would appear on her face. She was smart and very curious. Her head and eyes would glance in any direction, even at the slightest sound. She was as gray as black charcoal with a fierce black mane. You could see touches of gray poking about her large frame. She moved with a purpose, and she always seemed to know where she was going, never wanting to follow, but to lead. She had kind, gentle eyes that seemed to say, I just want to do great things and to feel I had a positive impact on others' lives. This is a story about a true champion in a different sense of the conventional horse racing industry's definition. Nothing in this world is impossible to achieve if you can dream it. This is the story of our journey together through her greatest triumphs, worst defeats, and the amazing inspirational impact that she had upon everyone that she touched. Please join me and let me tell you about my most special dream 
one that became a reality and made me never forget that you can accomplish anything in this world if you just believe that it's possible. Dreams are the combination of reality and a make-believe world that we all can live in if we dare to. There were many diverse <laughs> roads that led me to this place in time. Happy endings are subjective, depending on the day of the week and the person that you choose to ask. The happiness lies in the smiles, tears, and the impact made. This is a story about a horse that would not give up no matter what life threw at her. This is a story of the special people we met along the way, the good and the bad that helped shape this dream into reality. This is a story of a horse that shared her inner and outward struggles with sick children facing similar obstacles. This is the story of how pure gold shines when it's polished. This is the story of a dream. This is her story. The horses were loaded into the gate. The last thing I heard the track announcer say, one more to go, the newcomer, secret to gold. They're all in and they're off. As the bell went off, my eyes started filling with so many tears and June grasped my hand ever so tighter. The rest is just a moment that any words I could write could never explain. I looked around me and saw hands in the air and the cheers, go secret. I saw smiles and tears of pride. It seemed to last a lifetime for the horses to come around the final turn and turn for home. The horses were coming into sight now as the cheers grew louder. Then I finally saw my secret to gold in her full glory coming towards us. The emotion in my heart and the tears had taken over my entire body and I buckled at the knees. Secret was right in front of all of us now. I could swear that she glanced at me as she raced by. In that moment, I saw that familiar smile on her face, her ears back, and the most beautiful sight I think I will ever see in my entire life. It was as if she was saying to me, Mark, we did it. She was my champion, a champion for all the people in the world that needed a light to guide their way. I can't think of a better way to define that word. Champions are not singularly defined by wins, losses, and money earned, but the impact they make and what life throws at them. It put life in clear perspective for the first time. As she raced past all of us, the vision will be burned into my mind forever. The last sight I can remember is the sun being so bright and blinding. Secret to gold disappeared past us into the golden sun, leaving a trail of gold dust in her wake and our hearts. My great-granddaughter of Secretariat was more than I ever could have imagined. She had such energy, spirit, and heart. At three days old, when she was turned out for the first time with her mother, Secret took off running down the street and had to be chased down. At just one week old, I knew Secret to Gold wanted to be a racehorse. Oh, yeah, who's a pretty girl? Huh? Best Kept Secret Racing was formed by myself, Mark Raven, and Anna Les in 2005. It is truly a great pleasure to be working with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Here we have Jessica Miller on behalf of Make-A-Wish. Next we have Joe and Karen, who are the parents of a very special young lady, which is Samantha. Samantha has a birthday coming up in the next week or so, and we would just like to say happy early birthday. Happy birthday. Um, I just love horses and I spend as much time as I can with them and I'm just really happy to be here. <laughs> this is Secret Samantha. We want to tell you a little story about Secret and how we think that she reminds us of you a lot. 
Um, she was diagnosed uh, with a severe throat injury in December of 2006. We were informed by the best vets in Kentucky that yeah. she should be retired and her racing career should be over. We were blessed to have found a wonderful surgeon at Purdue Animal Hospital in Indiana, uh, Dr. Jan Hawkins. He disagreed with the prognosis for secret. In January of 2007, we moved forward with this risky surgery. The odds at this point were against us. With the help of the entire Purdue team, led by Dr. Hawkins, Secret was on the road back to being a racehorse again. We're here at Arlington Park and ready for Secret's adult to breathe. Our jockey, James Graham. James, we would like to introduce you to Samantha. Samantha is our very special girl. I had now Samantha unless the major. We're going to jog back just to the end pole. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to lope over to the gate. That'll be here, Samantha. No problem. This is great. This beautiful young lady over here, Sylvia, has exercised Secret over the past couple of months. All I can say is that Secret is very special. This whole group is very special, and I feel honored to be a part of it and make it all she's come true. The main reason is that we're not given the next moment, and you have to take them and make them yours, because otherwise you're living for nothing. So you might as well dream and do something about it and make your dreams come true. We're very fortunate to be working with, with you and, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation to help uh, children's dreams come true, to help your dreams come true, Secret's dreams come true. We think, you know, you're a lot like Secret in many ways. You overcome the odds and fought with courage, faith, and heart to be standing here today. And we're very proud of you. Secret to Gold and Samantha both share a heart now. It doesn't matter how old we are, what our pedigree is, or how we appear to the world. It's how we deal with life's challenges that define us. We don't know how this story will end. The story is being written through the lives of Secret and Samantha. Sometimes in life, as in horse racing, the odds are severely against us. But if we give our best effort and use that spirit and heart, we will always be winners regardless of the outcome. Secret to Gold, along with Samantha, will always share this special bond that can never be taken away from them. Now that's a bet you can count on. Well, champions come in all sizes, and why that filly is being prepared to make her debut performance, I am here with Samantha Harris. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. This just has to be an amazing day for you. Yes, it is. It's very exciting. Everyone has been really nice to me, Mark and everyone, and I just really hope Secret does well today. Well, I think with you cheering him on, he will. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What are your hobbies? And, and, and you know, obviously horse racing has got to be a love. Yeah, I just love horses in general, and I spend as much time as I can with them. And um, I've been riding for like eight years. I can't really ride anymore, but I just spend as much time as I can with them. And why did you decide to make this your wish? I just love all the horses. I love coming out. I wanted to see what it's like behind the scenes of horse racing. And Secret's a lot like me, so she's a good horse for me. What do you think about your jockey, James Graham? He's great. He's yeah. really nice. And I know one thing. He's going to give you and that Philly 100% along with all the connections. Now, being joined also by uh, a representative here from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And uh, Ken Slaw, welcome to Arlington Park. Tell us about the Make-A-Wish Foundation and how it was you made this possible for Samantha today. Well, thank you. And it's uh, wonderful to be here. And thanks for having us. Uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Illinois has uh, just celebrated its 20th anniversary. We uh, raise money and provide wishes for over 600 children with life-threatening illnesses in Illinois every single year. And we are as pleased as can be that we're on Samantha's team and we're on the team of 600 kids every year that have their own race and their own challenge and we really try to give them hope and give them something to look forward to while they're battling through their illnesses. So it is uh, a joy for us, and it should be for everybody else, 
uh, to be part of these kinds of experiences. And we thank Mark as well, who was such an instrumental uh, part of Samantha's experience. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, in just a few minutes, that Philly is going to go postward, and in the words of a very wise person, a brave heart knows no obstacles, and I hope the same applies for you and that Philly this afternoon. And I know after this race, uh, they'll be presenting you with a little special gift from her. All right, Samantha Harris, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, will join up with them again after this race. And, oh, I think uh, they want to present you with this right now. All right, go ahead, Samantha. And this is um, Mark Raymond, the owner of Secret to Gold. And he has a little special present for you. Well, you wrap that good. <laughs> Oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, a lovely, that, that's an oil painting, I believe, isn't it? An oil painting of her. Where are you going to put it? Right in my room. <laughs> well, hopefully right next to her wind pitcher. And in just a couple of minutes, she will be going postward, I believe, right now. I'm going to take a peek at the odds boards. She is currently at 2-1, to one, so I think you've got the fans rooting for her as well. And there's nothing better than that. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, it has just been a pleasure to have you here this afternoon. We are so proud, all of Arlington, and uh, to all the recipients. Thank you, Samantha. Have a great day. Okay, so how did this crazy journey begin? I don't really know. Um, I can tell you that it's uh, one of the ways it started was with my parents, my lovely parents right here, Ron and Fern Raven. They're here tonight to support me. Thank you, Mom and Dad. They put me uh, in riding lessons when I was very young at a place called uh, Pepper Tree Farms, which is no longer in existence, and I got to ride and jump and show horses uh, and it was just an amazing thing. I fell in love with the animals at such a young age and then my parents decided another way for me to enjoy horses was to get me out of the house for eight weeks plus every summer. I'm sure there were ulterior motives to that as well. But at Camp Timberlane up in Minocqua, Wisconsin, I got to ride horses every day. And we got to, this was before really insurance came into play. So we would go on things called hell rides. Uh, racing through the forest, ducking under trees, jumping over things. We took the horses and, 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 uh, in, into lakes and swam. Horses are amazing swimmers. So, and we also competed. And I love to compete against the girls. <laughs> I said, okay, I don't look good, as good as they do, that's for sure. So, there's a couple ways we can do this. In fact, there's only one way. Our form's not going to be that good. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get over these jumps clean and fast. We're not going to knock any of these poles down, okay? So that's what I tried to do. As fast as I could, kept it clean, and in some cases I did... Uh, get the uh, the ribbon, so it was it was very exciting, and I um, to be able to ride every single day was was an amazing thing every summer for many many summers, and I fell away from that for many 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 years, and one day I said okay I'm going to try to get back into this I'm going to try to buy a horse. And that's what I wanted to do, buy a horse. And as I started looking around, I said, okay, well, this horse has this problem. This horse has that problem. So why don't we get a little creative? Why don't we breed a horse? 
I don't know what all that's about, but let's give it a shot. So with this particular situation, I met this beautiful lady, June Pedersen, out at Castle Ridge Keep Farm in Crystal Lake. That's where my horses are now. And she did something that is unprecedented in the horse racing industry. She leased me an extremely well-bred European thoroughbred horse. And she said, here's the deal. You want to breed your own horse? Here's how it's going to go. You find the stallion. You pay the stud fee. You pay me board every month while this horse is, is pregnant. And then when the baby comes, I'll take the horse back. I said, that's a pretty good deal. So I decided I was going to give this thing a shot, start right from the start, so that I could have a horse that I could name, and any problems that the horse happened to have, you could blame me for it. So this was the name of Secret's Mare. She died in 2008. Her name is Hopeful Game. Her father was named Game Zoda. Her mother was named A. Boo by a really wicked racehorse from the 70s named Full Out. Very fast horse. And, this, and, and uh, Hopeful Game had a lot of European breeding to her. And I found a stallion at Horizon Farms, which is now closed in Barrington, Illinois. And this stallion, Demidoff, died in 2012. He was a son of Mr. Prospector, uh, and his mother was Secretame or Secret Tommy. Secret Tommy. See, we're getting a little closer to how I got Secret's name a little bit. By the Great Secretariat. And if you ever want to go and try to find that X chromosome of Secretariat, you want to go through his female side. He had two males that, that ran, that won some money, Risen Star and General Assembly. The rest were all women. He's what's called a broodmare sire. So his women could run, okay? And then when his women had babies, those horses won. Somehow that secretary of gene seemed to come through and come across. And I did get some pictures of Demi Doff. He was a very beautiful horse. And here's Mr. Prospector. Now, he was out at Claiborne Farms uh, in uh, Paris, Kentucky, uh, 1970 to 1999. Raisin native, gold digger by the great 1952 Horse of the Year, Nashua. I'm sure maybe that name might ring a bell to some of you in here. And for this particular time, he ran 14 times. He came in first seven times. He came in uh, second four times, third twice, and $112,000 for that day was, was a pretty nice racing career. Uh, Secretame was born in 1978 and died in 2006. She lived a very long life. I did get a chance to meet her before she passed away. And Secretariat was uh, the father by Tamarit and by Tim Tam. And she won a couple of graded stakes. In fact, won also at Arlington Park, the Beverly Dean. And this is Secretame as an, a beautiful older lady, why don't we say, out at Merhaven Farms. And here is the great secretary at 1970 to 1989. Bold Ruler was the father, something royal by Prince Kilo. 21 starts, 16 wins, 3 seconds, 1 third, $1,316,808, the 1973 Triple Crown winner, Sorry California Chrome. <laughs> so, there were a lot of processes I had to go through on all this. First of all, the horse racing business, the only way you can breed is live cover. There's no artificial insemination. So, the horses actually have to do their business, or it's not legal. So I uh, 
was there to witness this. Um, not something I care to repeat. So, live cover. Term of a pregnancy is 12 months. Horses carry for 12 months. All you moms out there, it's a long time to carry. Sometimes they'll take even 13. Sometimes it can be 11. Uh, I remember we did an ultrasound. Now, it's, you can't really sex. It's very hard to sex uh, a, 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 a thoroughbred horse. I didn't know how they were going to do this. I thought they'd put some, you know, a little bit of lotion on her belly and do a few things. So I see the vet come out with this huge glove on, and the glove was inserted into her posterior, and some things were removed from her posterior, and then some other big gadget was stuck in there, and then I saw Secret to Gold. How did I name Secret to Gold? Well. Secreta, secretame, uh, first seven letters of secretariat's name, gold, Mr. Prospector, so that's how I came. I had to put several su uh, suggestions through. The jockey club who handles all of this goes through phonetical testing. If your horse's uh, sounds, your name sounds like another horse, they're going to reject you. If it's a public figure, they're going to reject you. If any type of that sort of thing, so you got to have a couple selections as you go through this. And this is Secret, uh, uh, Secret to Gold's pedigree. Uh, she's got Mr. Prospector there, and she's got a, a really nice horse on the female side named the Axe, who ran in the 50s with Willie Schumacher. I'm sure you might remember Willie Schumacher. Uh, never been, big spruce. Uh, so you know, really, really a nice bred horse.
Okay, so that's my baby girl. <clears throat> and this is her jockey club papers. Um, when you get your jockey club papers, there's a few things they want to see. They want to see a lot of pictures of the horse. They want to see cowlicks. They want to have DNA, <clears throat> excuse me, DNA samples to prove the parentage of the mother and the father so there's no funny business going on. So basically every horse at the University of Kentucky has uh, hair, hair samples and follicles on file. So, so that's when you get issued this. Now Best Kept Secret Racing, my company, was formed in 2005. And how do I pay for all this? <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Dad, right? They, <laughs> they're looking at me over there. Keep it down over there. Um, well, it wasn't easy. I was at that time working at a law firm in Chicago, and I took a second job uh, loading trucks in the evening at UPS, a four-hour shift. So I pretty much did everything that I could, including my parents, uh, to, to get this horse where she wanted to go. When this uh, Secret to Gold was born, I didn't really have any fashion on her being a racehorse. However, when she crawled out of her stall with the umbilical cord still attached, the, uh, five minutes after she was born, I knew this horse wanted to be a racehorse, and I need to, needed to find a way to make her dream come true. So step one, I needed to find a breaking facility. I looked around the Illinois area. I didn't really find anything that I felt comfortable with. <clears throat> so I sent her off to, to Custom Care Equine in Camden, South Carolina. And that's where uh, she spent uh, about, and this is some pictures of her at Camden. She was there for about six months. Uh, breaking can take four months, but you really need to be very careful when you break a horse so you don't buck their shins. You want to take it nice and slow. And that's what I really liked about uh, what Donna Fryer did out there in South Carolina for me. And these are some pictures, they have a racetrack out there, so these are some pictures of her working out and her getting a bath. Now, Secret to Gold had a problem her entire career, one that she was uh, called Toad Out. Now, Toad In, we can imagine what it would be, but Toad Out means that one of her feet naturally walked off to the side. So I walk like this, off to the side, just a little bit, just a little bit. It can be a problem with the constant pounding that you're going to see with a racehorse, especially changing leads coming around for the final turn. So she did struggle with this a lot of the time. Seattle Slough was towed out beyond belief. The thing is, when Seattle Slough ran, he whipped his leg around. He wasn't messing around. So he literally had to whip his leg around to get it straight and firm. And like I said, she was out there for about six months. Then I needed to select a trainer at Arlington Park. And I looked around and I found a gentleman by the name of Michael Stidham. Uh, he'd had some experience in bigger races. I, of course, was reaching for the stars. Uh, dreams of Derby and Oaks and all this other stuff. Uh, unrealistic, of course. But we can still dream, right? That's what we talked about before. Um, and Michael took the horse, and she had some amazing workouts. In fact, she was one of the fastest horses to work out at Arlington Park in 2007. Anytime she did a breeze, which is a, which is a workout, she was always in the top three percentile. And when they break down the percentile, they don't break it down by colts, by age, by fillies. She was just in that top percentile. She was out breezing, breezing Kentucky bred stakes winning horses out there. She was going three furlongs in 35 seconds at a light breeze, 46 seconds for four furlongs, really, really fast. And this is one of her workouts that she had that I managed to catch uh, on film. 
I would try to get out for all her published workouts. And what's amazing is that Secret to Gold's workout rider who did her workouts was an African-American uh, jockey uh, who was 52 years old. And she ended up making history, winning her... Go, 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 go! First race at Arlington Park, the oldest jockey and African-American to do that. We were very blessed to have her on, in our camp. And these are all of Secret's published workouts. She, she worked out uh, Arlington Park, Hawthorne, Hollywood Park, Santa Anita, Turfway. She's got more frequent flyer miles than I do. So as we prepare for Secret's first stakes race as a two-year-old, problems begin in mid-November of 2006. The trainer is released over a difference in opinion on whether Secret has the heart and stamina to be a racehorse. This was not the case, as you will find out later. So we laid her up in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky on a friend's farm that we had there and found out she had, you know, a little bit of swelling in her, her legs. So we just gave her a break and sent her off to Turfway Park in Florence, Kentucky. I received a phone call in the middle of the night, and this is when disaster struck. The diagnosis by the two best veterinarian clinics in Lexington, Kentucky, laryngeal hemiplegia. Laryngeal hemiplegia is an uncommon upper respiratory disorder. It is ca categorized by the paralysis of the left arytenoid cartilage and vocal cord. When this one-sided paralysis occurs, the affected flapper is sucked into the airway when the horse inhales, thus obstructing the airflow. A roaring or whistling sound occurs as the horse breathes in and is most evident as the horse begins the ex uh, to exercise. So when Secret to Gold was slowing down around the final turn at Arlington Park, it wasn't about heart. It wasn't about stamina. It was that she was breathing out of one side of her throat. That's all of her airway. And with this particular situation, how do you prevent this? Early diagnosis is important to prevent debilitation due to ex exercise intolerance. Meaning, if, if, if the trainer that I had before would have scoped her regularly, they would have seen something in there. Chondritis, chondroma, paralyzation. Medication could have treat, treated this in the earlier stages. Unfortunately, it got to the point where it was just paralyzed. And treatment usually involves some type of surgery. Once laryngeal hemiplegia is diagnosed through an endoscopic examination and graded on a scale of one to four, and she was graded on a four, the best method of treatment can be determined based on the use, age, and breed of the horse. The most successful surgery is an arytenoidectomy. This method is usually reserved for horses that have, a, have had a failed laryngeoplasty. Surgery removes the body of the arytenoid, leaving the muscular process intact. Complications include difficulty swallowing and pneumonia. So that's something she's, uh, she is going to have to deal with. Now what were the Kentucky Vets recommendations? <coughs> Retire Secret to Gold immediately. The surgery and risks will cost more than the horse will make or can accomplish as a racehorse. Bluntly said to me, the surgery is worth more than the horse. What do you do? Is this the end? of this magical story and our journey? And what about what Secret to Gold wants? The odds were severely against us, and in the darkness, we found our angel. I contacted Purdue Large Animal Hospital, and there was a surgeon there by the uh, name of Dr. Jan Hawkins. He interned under Dean Richardson at the New Bolton Center in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Now, Dean Richardson, you may know, is the one who worked on Barbaro, tried to save his leg, almost did. 
And I did interview Dr. Richardson uh, for my book, and I asked him how he taught Dr. Hawkins. It's Dr. Hawkins says, I love throats. Well, that's kind of weird, you like throats. He worked on chickens, goats, all these different things. I didn't go to a racehorse vet. I went to just, you know, a vet. And, and Dr. Richardson simply replied to me, Dean Richardson, teach Jan Hawkins. He could teach me a few things about this. Dr. Hawkins, first thing he did, he said, Mark, we can do this. The second thing he did is he sent me an article on horses that have had this particular surgery and succeeded afterwards. And then he gave me his personal cell phone number. An amazing individual. Is this something that I want to go through? Is this something that Secret wanted to go through? There's long-term ramifications. She has to eat on the, fl on the floor. She won't be able to talk anymore. She would sound like, you know, an old mafioso Don. No vocal cords on one side. And I remember laying with her as we were getting ready while she was under anesthesia, fading out. I asked her, is this something you want? And she simply looked over at me and gave a little grunt. And I knew that we needed to do this. So we did. And these are some pictures of what you have to do. These horses are huge. So, the, I mean, literally, the operating rooms are, are huge. And what, that's a tracheotomy, okay? This is where he needed to cut to get in, to get into the throat, to get that. And what he needed to do was leave just enough proud flesh on one side so she wouldn't aspirate food and water for the rest of her life. And so these are some graphic pictures. And so he went in there and he removed that. And it was a complete success. And Secret then went on the road to recovery and was at Hillendale Farm in Barrington, Illinois, uh, Mr. Richard Dutchie Swa's place. Beautiful facility. Joe Carper runs it. And they took care of Secret. And so what do we do next? How do we share Secret's fight and spirit to do what she loves to do with children that are battling more life-threatening ailments? How can we use Secret as an example and an inspiration to others? By making children's dreams come true and a partnership with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. By giving the children and their families an experience, smiles, and a horse like them an example to cheer for as they fight for their lives. My little secret rose from the ashes like a phoenix to find her second calling. So we hired this gentleman, Al Ali. Al Ali, uh, in Saudi Arabia, trained the Sultan princes how to ride. Very gentle man took very good care of Secret, would spend hours icing her legs down after workouts. This is something I wasn't, he was a much smaller barn, a beautiful man. And she ended up fighting back to have her first race at Arlington Park on June 10th, 2007. And she would always race for a child. Secret to Gold in total met 26 children and counting throughout her career. Those are children that she met at the racetrack, children that came out to the farm. This is her, her first child, Samantha, and Samantha you saw in that video. Samantha had something called U, uh, Ewing sarcoma. Ewing sarcoma? Is it Ewing? Ewing? Ewing sarcoma. And 
just was beaming all the time. These moments were precious. To watch these moments between a child suffering and secret, knowing. I didn't do anything. I simply brought the two together and magic happened. Secret could bite me one minute, and then when a child is presented to her, she knows. And it's just an amazing thing. Thank God, because I didn't have insurance. <laughs> so all the children, when they met Secret, got a, a Lambda scan of this original print, which was done when Secret was two years old. They'd get uh, a hat for best kept secret racing here. And all these other trinkets, we take the families out, we put their name in lights. And you know what the thing is? Is the families needed the break just as much as the children did. You've got teenage brothers and sisters that are caregivers at such a young age. They love horses, they love to get out. So it was an amazing experience, not only for the child, but also for their families. And I would take a group to the Kentucky Derby as well. When, when I could uh, get tickets and take a group down there. So I, when the Make-A-Wish, I was granting what's called supplemental wishes, okay? The main wishes are to meet a rock star, <laughs> go to Disney World. So I was doing the smaller things while they wait to do these major things. And once a child is granted their wish with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, they are, in essence, out of the program. When you meet Secret to Gold, you are in our lives forever. And I still talk to all the families. It's a lifelong bond that we will always have together. And this is uh, the documentary that was shot. Samantha did leave us in 2011. Um, beautiful individual. Second child secret met her name uh, is Nicolette. Nicolette had vasculitis. Beautiful violin player. Beautiful. High school, loved horses. Uh, brother, military man, beautiful family. Very loving family. I would go to their blood drives. They can't get me out of their hair once I'm in, so it's like... Um, and Nicolette, I took to the Kentucky Derby with her family and her brother right before he was being sent off to, uh, to combat. And I noticed that she wasn't doing real well. She was smiling for me. She was trying to put on a face. But I knew she was in a lot of pain. And that really hurt me. And she also left us in 2011. And these are the memories, my friends. The memories of these children. The hopes. The dreams. And this became a passion for me. The love. And strangely enough, I have an example sitting in this room, two examples, okay, of how I should have been. And it took me a horse to realize, to show me what I can be. My parents tirelessly spend time reading to the blind visiting AIDS hospice patients, doing things and not expecting to thank you. And I should have followed that example, but sometimes, you know what, folks? You got to fall down to get back up. You got to learn for yourself. You got to find your path. And I hope that I found my path to making my parents proud, and I'm going to continue to keep doing that. Christopher, a four-year-old boy, suffered from no-breathe seizures, could not talk, had to eat from a feeding tube, constantly had to have his weight monitor, monitored. 
When they lifted this boy up to secret to gold, literally, he wiggled around and smiled with his eyes, and it was such a magical moment. And in that barn, it was like we were watching a movie. All the grooms, they didn't even speak English, but you know what? We all spoke a language that day. We were watching something absolutely magical happen. And we didn't really know what was going on between them, but we knew it was something special. And that's Christopher and his mother. And that's everyone standing for a group shot. And in Secrets, in 2007, Secret Visit uh, Camp I Am Me in Mount Prospect, Illinois. It's a children's burn camp. What better example to talk to children who have suffered this devastating uh, situation about beauty and the perseverance to overcome, to have this horse behind me as I speak, an example something to look up to and absolutely amazing that that we may not look like everyone else we may not sound like everyone else we might not have the pedigree as, as somebody else but you know what damn it we can do what we want to do if we believe in ourselves and we can overcome these obstacles that are in our way And in the same summer, she, she visited a Wisconsin summer camp for burned and injured youth in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, Secret to Gold has been publicly recognized and has had um, many accolades. Uh, some of the things you'll see up here. She was, uh, had an article written about her in the uh, Kentucky magazine, The Blood Horse, which is the main magazine of Kentucky horse racers. If you're in, in horse racing, you get the blood horse. Mm -hmm. So this little horse made some noise in Kentucky. And also the Thoroughbred Times, which is their other publication that they have in Kentucky. These are the two that all the sportsmen and everybody reads. She had a documentary made about her. Now, I want to tell you a little story about this. The Jockey Club in New York City has rules, and they're very strict. And the rules are that a horse's name is recycled after 10 years. No questions asked. Goes back into circulation. And unless you're a stakes-winning horse or you're a stakes-winning producing horse, or blah, 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 and have a lot of money backing you, you will be recycled. I received a letter from the president of the Jockey Club, and the president of the Jockey Club said to me in his letter that he is pensioning Secret to Gold's name for all time, that no horse may ever use that name again. It is in red, just like Secretariat, and Seattle slew for her gifts to humanity and improving the image of horse racing. Beautiful. First time ever in the history of the Jockey Club in over a hundred years. Beautiful. So I thought that was just really special for her. And hopefully I can get my little book here published. Um, my best kept secret, the true story of how one horse turned dreams into solid gold. We have a website now, uh, bestkeptsecretracing.com. Poems, letters, and numerous articles written about her from family members, fans, and local publications. In fact, in our New Life magazine that just came out today, you will see um, something that... Uh, that Glenn Devins did, who's our, our PR firm, about Secret to Gold and myself and our work. But I wanted to share with you really quickly one, a, a parent, okay, of one of the, of Christopher, the mother, wrote me a letter. 
And she wrote to me, Last summer, my son, Christopher, was granted a wish by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. His health was too unstable for a trip, but he was given his own therapy horse, Brighton. She is gentle and curious. She helps him gain strength. He loves to ride her, be outdoors, and spend time with his sisters. A month after we got Brighton, we got another surprise. We were going to meet a racehorse named Secret to Gold. We spent a wonderful day at the racetrack. We got to meet a trainer, a jockey, and even the owner of the track. We watched races from right up at the track, and Chris got his picture taken with the winning horse and jockey. By far, everyone's favorite part of the day was our time in the barn with Secret. She was curious about him. She put her big, soft nose down on his face. She gave him a full sniff down of all his body. Chris thought this was pretty funny and arched his back. He threw his head back and gave a full belly, albeit silent, laugh. Chris can't talk. He can smile and cry and speak volumes with his eyebrows if you have the heart and patience to listen. So I have to tell you what I think this day meant for him. First of all, he got to go where few of us get to go. He got to see, hear, smell, touch, and taste life. I honestly say that the more of this planet he gets to experience, the harder his mind and body will work to stay in it. Secondly, he got to give his sisters a gift. There have been so many times that they have not been able to do something or have had to do something hard or scary because of him. I was thrilled that they got to do something special. Most importantly, he got to meet an animal that has faced physical challenges remarkably similar to his own. Chris and Secret have both had airways collapse, been given tracheotomies, and cannot make sounds. They both face constant aspiration risks and will continue to face human prejudice. Secret was born to be a racehorse, and to most people that means to make money. When her physical problems threatened, many people discounted her and did not feel like she was worth saving. Chris's brain and body have not allowed him to be what we expect a child to be, but that doesn't mean he isn't wonderful. If we can get past the fact that life is not always what we thought it would be, we could get down to the business of savoring what it is, not what it could be. Secret to Gold is out there showing the world that they should not be so quick to judge, categorize, and discount all the gifts we are given. If people can see that about a horse, they can learn to see that about each other. My horse has met his, my son has met his horse soulmate. They are alike in so many ways. They are both four and both love to run. But most importantly, they both may not do what we expected when they were born, but they are doing even greater things now than we ever could have imagined. And Secret has tens of thousands of fans from all over the world, England, you name it. But most importantly, as we talked, she changed my life. She took me from a taker into a giver. I was in a position in my life where I was saying, when's my next vacation? When do I get to, uh, what's in it for me? What do I do next? And she put me in a position to change my life. You know, and that's really what it's all about, isn't it? It's about helping people, and you don't even need them to say thank you at the end of the day. And this horse carries the hopes and dreams of so many beautiful children that she was blessed to meet and impact in such a positive way. She carries on her shoulders dreams that will never be realized and lives that ended far too soon. Secret's retired now, and she's a mommy. Her first uh, girl, Silver Phoenix, 2010, repriced Secret to Gold by Demidov. And then she had a son, 
Talos in 2011. Go for Jin, Secret to Gold by Demidoff. And Go for Jin still holds the record for the fastest uh, derby win in uh, harsh, rough, muddy conditions in 1994. Secret continues to inspire. And my only hope this evening is that I have done her justice and told her story with the passion and the truth that she would want me to. I encourage all of you to smile when you hear her name. She would not have it any other way. When I think of her, sm a smile instantly comes to my face and a tear in my eye. I remember back when I saw her in her full glory in the bright golden sunlight doing exactly what it is she was born to do. This is a dream that became our reality, one that I will never wake up from, nor would I want to. My wish is that we all can continue to dream and know what, that dreams really do come true. Mine was in the form of a little filly named Secret to Gold that showed me what the heart can do when the odds are severely against us. Her life has made my journey complete. Secret to Gold taught the entire industry about heart, spirit, and the will to fight overcoming obstacles around every corner. And she took them on with grace and she took them on with dignity. She made an impact on this great sport that was different and unique. Let us never forget this champion. Now, the secret to her gold will continue to surround and impact me for the rest of our lives together. She will continue working with children as will her sons and daughters. As she was born in my arms, secret to gold will someday die with me holding her in my arms, caressing her neck. I will whisper in her ear how much I love her and remind her that she made this world a better place to live in for being an inspiration to so many that needed their own champion. These are the last words she will hear as she takes her last breath. My tears dripping down on her face will send her to a better place with no pain, no judgments, just love and wide open spaces to explore. The best part of me will die in that moment, but I know that all I have to do is close my eyes and remember our little dream we had so many years ago, and there she will be until I can rejoin her. Then we can once again play together in the warm golden sunlight amongst green fields forever, young, with no fences and no limitations.
Herbert and I thank you for joining us on our journey. One horse, one person, one smile can make all the difference in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.